Today I'm going to share with you four ways that you can use your LED that I bet you've never heard before. And I know a bunch of you own LED now. It is my very favorite modality. It is studied, it works, and it is one of those things that is so incredibly versatile. It is non-invasive, it is easy, and it's not really that time consuming. So let's get right into it. Did you know that you can actually use your LED to pre-treat to prevent sunburn? And if you happen to get a sunburn, you can use LED to help you heal faster. Now you might be saying, Pen, it's the middle of the winter, what does that even matter right now? But there are a couple things. If you are someone who goes to the mountain, you like to snowboard or ski, remember that the reflection off of the snow can cause some pretty good sunburns. And if you are somebody who does do any of those kind of winter sports, you know this. So a nice session of LED red and near infrared in the morning before you go up to the mountain is a great way to to help your cells be powered up with ATP and help kind of protect your collagen, help protect your elastin. Now, if you happen to get a sunburn, you can treat yourself after with LED to speed up the wound healing process. Now, every single one of these things that I'm going to share with you today are backed by science and scientific studies. I'm going to link studies and anything I can that's relevant in the description box if you want to check it out a little bit further. Now, when summer does roll around for those of us here in the States, for example, then what a great idea if we are going to be out in the sun to pre-treat with LED. Now, of course, we still have to wear a sunscreen. We should still wear a wide brim hat. We should do all of the things. But if we can add this extra layer of protection, of enabling our skin to be ready for the onslaught of UV, then why wouldn't we want to do that? So that is the first way that LED can be used that you might not have known about. Now this second one is one that I'm going to share with you and I am going to share the studies or the study that I think is the relevant study. But I do want to encourage you to speak with your um, eye doctor. But eye health and age-related degradation of our eyes can actually be positively impacted by using red light. Now, there was a study done, and they actually used 670 nanometer red light. So red, long wave red light. And basically what they did is they took a group of people between, I think, 34 years old and 70, and they treated them for three minutes in the morning to see if it had any effect on their sight. What they found was in the group that was, I believe, over 40, that three minutes of red light exposure actually had an up to 20% improvement in their age-related degradation, their eyesight. Now, the way that I understand it, and I am not an eye doctor, is that in our retina, there are rods and cones. The rods and cones are our photoreceptors. Now, we lose rods as we get older. They just die off. But the cones stick around for our entire life. But as we get older, those cones start to degrade and they theorize that the reason for that, one of the reasons, is that the mitochondria and the ATP is depleting over time. Now, if you've been here for a while, you know that something that LED does, like a big thing that LED does, is it helps to promote the production of ATP. And our eyeballs actually have the best access of anywhere on our body for receiving light and actually doing something with it. In fact, our eyeballs are actually an extension of our brain and the only part of our brain that sits outside of the skull, which I think is pretty interesting. So you have direct access to it with the light. Now, lots of caveats here. Number one, I'm never going to look at a light if I have to squint, if I feel like looking away, if it hurts my eyes. That can't be good. So that's my initial, you know, well, how do you know if it's good or bad, you know, kind of thing. If it bothers your eyes, if you feel like it is hurting your eyes, that's not good. 
In the study, what they used was they used a very, very low power. It was eight, eight milliwatts per centimeter squared. It was very, very low power of uh, red light. Now, most of our masks and everything are, you know, maybe 50 milliwatts per centimeter squared, not eight. So you have to kind of take that into consideration. If you think that you might want to try this at home, you want to talk to your eye doctor about it. I actually did talk to my eye doctor about it. He was very excited about it. He did not have any qualms with it whatsoever. He agreed with me on the recommendation of, you know, don't look at anything if it hurts. You shouldn't look right at the sun. It, that will hurt your eyes. But if you go out for a very, very early morning walk and get a little bit of that early morning sunlight in your eyes, it's very, very good for you. Same with the red light. What I really thought was interesting was that in this study, the younger people actually didn't see much benefit. It was the older people that saw the benefit. And they definitely said that that is because as we get older, those cones are degrading. And part of the reason they're degrading is the mitochondrial health and the, you know, breakdown, the slow down of ATP. There's just less gas in the tank. We're just kind of petering along as we get older when it comes to our eye health. They're straining, they're struggling, and we're just aging. So if we can feed those cones a little bit more ATP, if we can get that generated, then theoretically, and what this study says, is that we can improve our eye health. So again, I'm going to link the study. There are so many different articles that are digesting that, that particular study that I think you can get a really fair and full picture if you want to kind of dive into that more. Now, you might ask, well, why did they include, you know, eyewear with LED if it's good for your eyes? That would be because a lot of these LEDs that we are using, the panels in particular, are a hundred milliwatts per centimeter squared, or, you know, the power is really, really high and they're very, very bright. We don't want to stare at something super bright up close where it hurts your eyes. Again, common sense says that if it hurts your eyes, if you have to squint, if you feel like looking away, that's not good for you. And also some people are just sensitive to light. Some people are not going to be able to take advantage of this at all because they're so sensitive to light that this is just not an option for them. But I wanted to bring it to your attention because I think that it is really interesting science and I think it's worth diving into a little bit more and studying it a little bit more. Did you know that red light therapy, far infrared, near infrared, can actually help with cold sores. Now, if you happen to be someone who gets cold sores or if you have a loved one or you know someone, you know that from onset to when it is actually left behind, it can be quite a long time. It could be a week. It could even be 10 days. There was a study that took 87 people and they actually split them up. It was randomized. There was a control group with a sham light. And then of course the group with the actual red light. And basically with their cold sores, they implemented the two lights, the fake one and the real one. And what they found at the end of the study was that the people with the real red light actually healed their cold sore in 129 hours versus the people who had the fake light who healed in 177 hours. Now, that might not sound like a huge, huge difference, but it's a couple of days. And if you are somebody who gets a cold sore, you can imagine what a couple of days faster healing would mean to you. I think that that is an area that is uh, probably not talked about as much. It's not necessarily sexy to talk about, but dang, if you're somebody who gets cold sores, try using red light. The wavelength that they used was 1072. So most of us don't have that. Now they do have little devices like on Amazon that are not expensive. They're small, so they're made for cold sores. But if you don't have that, you don't want to use that, the next time you get a cold sore, consider holding your red light mask up without touching your skin and giving yourself treatments. Now in the study, they treated three times a day and each time they did three minutes. So I would definitely recommend that you do at least three times a day when you get a cold sore, try it, see if it helps you. And if not, it's definitely worth looking into those little devices that are not very expensive if you are somebody who gets recurrent cold sores because getting it to heal faster would be everything if you're a person that gets a cold sore or if you have a kid that gets a cold sore. 
My goodness, no kid wants to go to school with a cold sore. They just don't. So if we can help them heal more quickly with a non-invasive light, that's amazing. Okay, the last one is back knee. Now, I know that we know that, that light therapy can help with acne. Typically, what we're talking about is blue light. Blue light therapy can really help with acne. What if you are a 50-year-old woman, but you do not need blue light, so you don't have a blue light at your disposal, you don't want to buy one for the occasional time that you might break out, maybe during the summer or whatever, what you can do is use your red and near infrared. Now, those lights, those wavelengths actually treat acne really, really well out also. They're safe, they're non-invasive, and it's easy. What you can do is take your neck and deck, this is mine from Higher Dose. You can use Current Body has one, Light Salon has one, Omnilux has one. So many of these exist now. You may already own one. You can take your neck and deck and actually put it on backwards so that it sits on your back. Treat the back of your neck, treat down your back. You can use these in creative ways that aren't exactly what you thought neck and deck you can totally use it for your back as well. There was a study that took 27 women. They were 18 to 45 years old. And basically they treated their acne for six times. The wavelength that they used was 785. So red slash near infrared. And the results were a significant improvement in their acne. No blue light. This was red and near infrared. I've known for a very long time that red and near infrared can really help with acne. It's anti-inflammatory. It is going to help with wound healing. It's going to help with hyperpigmentation. Because it boosts the ATP, it helps our cells to do everything better. Think about ATP this way. Think about light and us taking in the light and then using it in the form of ATP for all of the processes in our body to work better. Think about solar panels up on the roof of a house. The solar panels take the sunlight in, convert it into electricity, and then all over our home, we're able to use that energy to power things in our house, our lights, we could power our washer machine, we could power, you know, our vacuum, that kind of thing. That is ATP to our body. We've taken this light, we get this ATP, we use that ATP all throughout our body to do the things that our body has to do anyway, better. So it can help with healing acne just by virtue of our body doing what it does best, better. Anyway, you guys, those are the four ways that I thought I would share with you today, the way that LED can help various conditions. Let me know if you've heard of any of these. I'm going to be doing a whole series on LED. My next one is going to be new discoveries in LED. I actually have purchased a few new masks and I had one sent to me, all of which are very interesting and very different. And I'm going to be sharing that with you very, very soon. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you're having a really wonderful day and I will talk to you in my next skincare video. Take care.